Well, hello there, my Capricorn Collective Sun, Moon, Rising signs. Welcome to your new moon. To uh, full moon, what do I need? Read, right? New moon in Capricorn, uh, which is uh, December 26th, the day after Christmas. To the full moon in Cancer, January 10th, 2020. Happy New Year and all of that. Uh, happy holidays. Happy New Year. I am your reader, Mark Angela Lyons, Mal for short. Uh, president of Drawing the Circle Productions, professional witch, professional intuitive, and reading cards on YouTube from my parents' basement, their rec room <laughs> in Saratoga. I am visiting. Uh, my family up in Saratoga for a couple of days uh, for Christmas. Though I am pagan, I will celebrate at the drop of a hat anybody's uh, holiday as long as it's pretty much harm none. Yeah, I'll do my best, right? Not Wiccan, but we'll use the Wiccan raid with family. <laughs> harm none to the best of our ability, right? Uh, I, if you are new to the channel, please uh, welcome. Uh, please do like and subscribe. I'm making my way to a thousand subscribers uh, so that I can do super live chat, make a little ching on the side, um, make my coin, as it were, because uh, I do private readings. This is what I do for a living. That's what I mean by professional intuitive. It's not like I have a day job. This is what I do. A spiritual teacher, a spiritual counseling, really, a lot of what I do. Uh, and I will do drunk tarot once a month. For the first couple of months, we see how it goes. Once I hit a thousand subscribers on super live chat, and I will make you all laugh, and there's a video in the description box going into that in a lot more detail. Cool, cool. Um, so a what do I need read? It's a little different than a lot of what I see on YouTube, and that's great. It's an art form. We're always uh, pushing the creative envelope with divination systems and readings, right? That's the idea, evolution. Uh, this is like once a day going to, I don't know, an oracle, you know, like a, a oracle system, like an oracle card, a totem card, a, a rune, a tarot, something, and asking the divine through a divination, divination system, a uh, card of the day kind of thing. But it's a little more fine-tuned, saying, what do I need? Because sometimes we can ask, like, where, what's going to happen? Good luck. <laughs> it's quantum. Maybe you get a version. Who knows if that's the version you're going to be in at the end of it all. Um, <laughs> right? It's like GPS. You have free will. Uh, not control, but free will. Uh, what do I need? Rita's saying, well, what do I need? Right? Like, I'm going to lay aside my idea of what I think I need and ask a higher power what do I need. That's called the grace of humility. Uh, the first grace that I discuss in my book, Words of Grace, which is now marked down to fourteen ninety five from twenty four ninety five for the month from for the month of December, right? Twenty four ninety five to fourteen ninety five. Yeah, I knocked ten bucks off on um, my website, drawingthecircle dot com, in the store. Cool, cool. <laughs> Go look at that too. There's a link down in the box there too. Uh, so what we're going to be looking at here is uh, this waxing moon, right? Capricorn, new moon in Capricorn day after Christmas, which means the three, like 23rd, 24th, 25th, is Dark Moon with family. Can be tricky. That's why I'm in the basement learning to print. All of it's hot. Uh, so to really start this, right, in that holiday kind of season of light, festival of lights time, uh, to have a look at what you're going to plant, metaphorically speaking, uh, to come to full moon in Cancer. Cool, cool. So let's take a deep breath. The more conscious you are of your breath, the more conscious I am of my breath will sync up with the guidance and the grace from the divine. Keeping in mind that this is a general read. Check your other signs. Not every piece of information is going to make sense now or may resonate at all, so please do take what resonates. You'll feel it within your body. You are earth signs like I am. I am a Virgo, so if how you know it's not yours is when you hear something in a reading and it goes, meh, <laughs> right? That's how you know. That's not an intuitive resonance, but if it's uh, abrupt, right? If it's just like, <gasps> like exciting or oh, like a kick in the gut, just pay attention to it. Doesn't mean it's gospel truth. Just means there's your energy system is telling you something. Cool, cool. Let's dive in. Nice deep breath. And please pardon the lighting. <laughs> the Sagittarius reading was really dark, so I added this other sort of like desk floor lampy thing. And it's a little too neon for now. Neon fluorescent. That's what it is. Not great lighting. So let's breathe through it. Ah, oh, here we go, my Capricorns. My angels, please. Ah, Doreen Virtue, Healing with the Angels Oracle. All the decks I read are in the description box below at the bottom. Give credit where credit is due, my angels, please. One card. A broad spectrum, right? A broad view. 
a celestial POV for this Capricorn Collective Sun Moon Rising signs. What do they need for this new moon in Capricorn, their sign, to a full moon in Cancer, their opposite sign? Please, my angels. Oh, friendship. Now, of course, that means uh, we. Uh, who doesn't need a friend? What man is so rich that he cannot afford a new friend? But certainly to focus on, to value, to be thankful for in some way, even if just consciously being aware of it. Yes, gift giving season and all of that. Um, but that thing, not just of the friends in your life, make new friends, keep the old, one is silver, the other gold. I know it's Girl Scouts. I wasn't one. Doesn't mean I don't have a rhyme, rhyming couplet skill, because I do, uh, from the memory of them at least. Uh, but it's also about being friendly with yourself, right? Being friendly with situations, seeing whatever is going on as friendly, though perhaps friendly in disguise, that everything is happening for us to grow, to heal, to evolve, to become the best that we can be on a soul level. <laughs> the personality does not have to like it. In fact, the personality can out and out hate it, but I do recommend that the personality at least accepts this is all happening for me on some level, and this is a hero's journey, and what hero's journey happens without adversity? Because then there are times where you get what you want. It's like, look what I manifested. It's like, no, you didn't. That was in the divine plan. <laughs> that was that was something that you just happened to want. That that sort of went down. And of course, when something is taken away or you didn't get what you want, it's like, oh, what did I do wrong? It's like nothing. That's <laughs> that's the the erosion and renewal of the cycles of life. Puppies upstairs, yeah. <laughs> got family. We don't have a full house. We got enough of us. There's three dogs in this house, two cats. Two siblings, my brother and I, and my parents. <laughs> so, it should be an interesting night. So I'm in the basement, learning to print. <laughs> All of it's hot. Let's ask the goddesses with the daughters of the moon tarot. I know, some of you have B-52s in your head. You're welcome. Merry Christmas <laughs> from a pagan. Breathe. <sighs> oh, my goddesses, please. One card in clarity for this Capricorn Collective. Sun, moon, rising sign. What do they need for this... Really, new moon in Capricorn. Brilliant for the Capricorns. What is it that they need for this new moon in Capricorn uh, to full moon next, which would be in January, January 10th, uh, 2020. Moon in, uh, full moon in Cancer, please. What is it this Capricorn needs, considering we've got the card of friendship from the angels, my goddesses, Persephone in particular? Ah, ah. So, oppression. Now, this does not necessarily mean uh, that you are going to be oppressed, particularly with the card of friendship, although, you know, if a friendship is feeling a little oppressive, that's one thing uh, to perhaps keep an eye on. But since the Daughters of the Moon, which I love this deck so much, uh, takes the traditional tarot and really does some cool spins and interpretations on it, which is why I've read this deck longer than any other. Um, here we're looking at a woman who's buried under stones, but the stones are actually faces of people. So this can be about codependence. This can be about making your decisions uh, based on what other people want, not necessarily what you want. In fact, the truth is, is that no one needs to like your choices but you. No one else needs to agree with them but you, because it's your path. And when you croak <laughs> and wake up from this, you can wake up while you are in the body. That's called spiritual awakening. Or you wait till you croak, you're going to look back and go, you know, I would have done it so much differently if only, right? I didn't have the weight <laughs> of other people's shit on me, right? I would have done this, I could have done that. And that's what makes us reincarnate. And recently I've learned about something called meta-incarnation, where you actually play the same lifetime over and over and over, just like a video game. Maybe that's why we like the video... Maybe that's why we like the video game so much as Gen Xers and above, right? Remember this? <laughs> Looks a little lewd, but Atari, right? Now you got this. Fig, right? So keep that in mind. The card, it's the card of, dev, of the devil, but there are two devil cards in, in this deck. The other one is uh, the trickster, Coyote Woman. So this is a little bit different, this one. Uh, this is really uh, about like the loose chains around the neck and the rider weight that the deem that, you know, Adam and Eve in chains could just like walk right away. They don't, right? So uh, let's ask, uh, very Capricorn, by the way. <laughs> you always hear, oh, the devil card, Capricorn. Well, I get it because of the horns on it, but there ain't no horns in this deck. In fact, if anything, there is a coyote in uh, in the deck in this particular card. 
So again, indicative of the trickster, right? How we trick ourselves, our own means of self-sabotage. So let's ask the gods now with the mythic tarot. Please, my gods. One card in clarity. Keep in mind that all five, I'm using five decks, each one of them could talk about a different thing that you're supposed to, uh, that, you, what do I need? Two, five different things that you need. Um, I'm usually good at weaving them together so that at least you have a cohesive story and you can see the different elements play out in life, even if they're not all so uh, correlative, right? Correlated. Breathe. Ah, oh. My gods, please. One card in clarity for this Capricorn Collective Sun Moon Rising sign. What do they need for this new moon in their sign? New moon in Capricorn only happens once a year. Usually, well, only in December. Maybe I guess it could happen in January. Uh, please, one card in clarity. So far, the angels are talking friendship. Uh, the goddesses are talking oppression. Uh, the card of the devil. Definitely a feeling there about other people's stuff weighing down on them. So what do they need? <laughs> it's so funny. The amount of major arcana cards that come out when I do what do I need reads. It's like they're, they're itching to come out. It's the chariot, right? So the chariot for me has a lot to do, obviously, with balance of motivation, right? White horse, black horse. I want to, but I don't, right? Like internal conflicts that we need to kind of get, even if you, you don't want to do so much want to, don't want to gas or break, it can very much be the inner feminine, the, the, the inner masculine, the yin, the yang, the intuition saying, I don't know about this, but the action wanting to, to, uh, to charge forward. How do you channel those together, right? Um, because the intuition is the rudder on the boat, right? The guidance system. And uh, the masculine is the rower. So if you think of like a rowboat, right? Now I know in a power boat you have both the, the propulsion and the direction at the bottom. But if you think of rowboat, right? But remember the rower is facing backwards. So the intellect can't really see. The divine masculine is basing everything on the path. Well, in situations like this, this is what we do. We row like mad. And the, the divine feminine, if you will, the yin, the intuition, steers it. So the chariot is about getting all of that together and moving it into one direction. Very much feeling about chariot, and because it's the god Ares, the Greek god of war, we are looking at a, okay, then we're going to see this as friendly oppression. Oh, I'm being oppressed, am I? Well, watch this, right? Because Aries pierces that stuff. It's Mars energy, right? It's very, it's so funny. People will say, oh, it's, I'll hear it on, on YouTube. People will say, oh, it's the card of cancer. And I guess I can get that to an extent. Um, but it is very Mars energy in the sense that it is going to plow through. It is go it's very masculine energy in that sense. But having to balance, right, the yin and yang, the left, th the left brain, the right brain, the divine mind, the divine heart with divine will. <laughs> Thy will be done, making those choices for the highest good and harming none. As I will it, so let it be done. Lovely little rhyming couplet to stick at the end of any spell, but you, you know, may they twist and turn, writhe and burn for the highest good and harming none. Doesn't work. Let's keep going. Two more cards down. You hear that? That's my uh, my brother's dog, Honey. I think she's a lab, a golden lab, sweetheart. But chatty. That's why I have cats. She found me down here. Fuck. Find your dog. She's a sweetheart. All right, so the higher souls of all involved, uh, speaking to us through the Whispers of Love Oracle. why I live alone. Nice deep breath. <laughs> ah, the higher selves of all involved, please. One card in clarity for this Capricorn Collective Sun, Moon, Rising sign. Please, what do they need for this new moon in their sign of Capricorn, right? Uh, December 26th to the rest of the, the half moon all the way through to full moon, January 10th, 2020. Please, the higher selves of all involved, please, a whisper of love for this Capricorn Collective Sun, Moon, Rising sign. What do they need? Look at your pattern in relationships. Yeah. Yeah. Totally feeling that with this oppression card. Um, it requires inner strength, the chariot, inner strength, to recognize that you need to change or modify your behavior. Uh, look 
at your patterns and relationships. And I think that since we've got friendships here, like this might be more about friendships, right? This might be about how people talk you into things, that if someone's using friendship or loyalty as a uh, power over device, that's not just, that is not balanced. Uh, boundaries, 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 and who knows better about tactical boundaries than the god Ares, right? The god of war, which that's how we think of boundaries territorially. Like, here's my kingdom, there's your kingdom. If you incur onto mine, it's an act of war. Well, we have to be a bit more diplomatic. And I do think that's where I think even the card of the chariot can be seen as a diplomatic card in that you're going to balance it with the sacred heart, sacred mind, right? Divine feminine, divine masculine, what comes out of the mouth? Because you can come purely from one, purely from other, but if they're in opposite directions, not great. Can you make it all congruent? That, to me, is really more of what the card of the chariot is in terms of the congruence of your light and shadow, but I don't mean the good and evil as much as I mean the divine feminine, the divine masculine, the emotional, the mental. What's your conduct? What comes out of your mouth? Just saying. Thankfully, we have one more card left. From the Healing Mantra Deck by Matt Kahn, brand new, only came out a few weeks ago, got them when I was already doing the True Love readings, so I am going to be incorporating them quite a bit, but this is the first series, the What Do I Need reads, where I am introducing them. Uh, love them so much, they're incredibly simple, they're very lightsabery in that they tend to just like cut through stuff. Uh, there's not a lot written on the cards, there is a little bit more written in the booklet, which is why I'm reading from the booklet. His additional insights what he writes are really helpful and it's if anything nothing's been over 100 words yet so on one side of the card is the name of the mantra and the other side of the card is the mantra itself so let's get one of these from the masters right ah nice deep breath my capricorns for you because this is tricky friendship oppression the chariot and look at your pattern in relationships let's get you a mantra now to clarify mantras and affirmations are not the same thing affirmations are statements of truth that you repeat over and over and over as if to convince yourself and manifest some sort of reality usually as a result right serenity now all right uh, to become serene really horrible example but you get the idea well it's a seinfeld example it's good tv uh, what must see TV, if I remember correctly. Uh, but a mantra is like a code. That's why, you know, we know of so many, I know of so many in Sanskrit. I love the Sanskrit language, but ain't nobody speaking it fluently. So, uh, what's one of my favorite ones? Uh, oh, there are so many, so many. Um, uh, of course, you think I could remember one of my favorites. Ananda Hum. A-N-A-N-D-A -A -A space hum, H-U-M, -E means I am bliss, Ananda bliss, Ananda hum, Ananda hum, Ananda hum. Where if we, if I said I am bliss, I am bliss, I am bliss, I am bliss, right? You know, the mind, that because it's, if it's, so these are in English, they're just extremely helpful. So, you know, just don't say it once, right? A mantra, the word in Sanskrit means to cover or to protect. So as if to give the mind something to focus on while things are things, right? While things are in change. Um, and to protect the mind from perhaps uh, some influences that uh, wouldn't be great. Sort of like a vitamin. That's great. Thank you guys. Like that's how you boost your immune system, right? You get rest, you drink water. It's sort of like that. A mantra is like a way, that's really a great way of like feeding your, uh, your psychic immune system. <laughs> like that word psychic but there you have it let's get one shall we from the masters nice deep breath for you considering capricorns never easy is it my caps i know i'm a virgo i know breathe my darlings ah oh, the masters the masters please one card please a healing mantra deck matt and the masters please one card in clarity for this capricorn collective sun moon rising sign last card down a healing mantra for them for their own uh, new moon sign in capricorn the 26th of december through to full moon in cancer which is january 10th please 
a healing mantra, one card for this Capricorn collective, something to help them because, you know, to help them heal because, you know, the angels are talking a friendship thing going on here. The goddesses are talking about the devil card, oppression, fear, attachment, something toxic going on there for sure. Um, the gods are talking about the chariot. Wanting to sort of get their shit together and, and uh, move on. Maybe there is that uh, diplomatic aspect of dealing, you know, with the congruency of the head and the heart to, to move through this gracefully. But then the higher self saying, look at your pattern in relationships. Really, something good for them, please, my masters. A healing mantra for the Capricorn Collective this new moon to full moon next balancing the brain. I can't believe it. I mean, I should. I can be and do at once, which is what the chariot card is. I can be and do at once. Now, I'm going to read from the book, but let's just really get this clearly. If you're in a situation where you be, are being um, oppressed by some friendship, flip it and go, somehow this oppression is here to help me and I can deal with this in a friendly way. But in order to do that, I have to look at my patterns in relationships and do what I've never done before. Do this differently. You want to break from ancestral patterns and family patterns? Do what your family would never do. <laughs> right? Break the pattern. Don't make a big deal about it. Do it little by little by little. Capricorn, slow and steady wins the race. Right? Very Capricorn. So to, to bring the congruency of the head and the heart. Right? The left brain and the right brain. Uh, balancing the brain. I can be and do all at once. I can be and do all at once. You probably can't see that with that, <sighs> that light over nowhere near the Frankenstein place, unless it's in Saratoga. Okay, I'm going to read you from the book, Balancing the Brain, opened right to it. Uh, balancing the brain, I can be and do all at once. When the brain is balanced, you are no longer bouncing back and forth between being and doing. You allow each action to be expressed from a space of mindfulness, peace, and ease. In a balanced brain, each inner battle has been won, which makes it easier to navigate around those whose minds are still entrenched in conflict, like a friendship oppressed. Holy crap. Uh, from this space, you are able to do all that needs to be done uh, while co while operating from your soul's natural state of being. They're totally, totally cool. And this is giving you an opportunity to do your friendships, uh, to do it well, maybe your relationships in general, right? To bring a certain level of friendliness, uh, because that is the natural state of the soul. The soul acknowledges we're all one, right? That we're all the quantum field manifested in this, these myriad forms, the world of multiplicity but that ultimately uh, what we do to another, we do to ourselves. So there's this little bit on the end that I love. This mantra is ideal for reducing stress at work. <laughs> Makes sense, balancing the brain, having to be and do at the same time. Being a more mindful parent, don't see why that couldn't transmute to friends, and increasing levels of accountability, right? Your own. It's like, okay, well, then let me be accountable, right? How do I be accountable in this relationship? How do I let other people off the hook, understanding that they are oppressed and that their oppression is not my own to rescue them from, but certainly I can do this in a way that is friendly, that I don't have to rescue people necessarily, but I can be and do in, I can be friendly without hemorrhaging my self-respect, without loss of dignity, and without doing something I don't want to do. You know, sometimes when our friends are in really bad places where they're oppressed by their own pain and they don't even know they're in pain, I think that's the human condition, by the way. I think um, the majority of people on planet Earth are in excruciating pain that they have no idea they're in and don't know what to do about it anyway, right? And so we act out in these ways. We lie, we cheat, we steal, we abuse, we neglect, we codepend, all of these things, right? D addictions, attachments, toxicities of all varieties. Well, 
no one can really heal us of that stuff except ourselves in tandem with the divine and certainly those that the gods uh, send our way. So what can we do if we are in a friendship where that has become a predominant vibration? Now, I am a spiritual counselor, not a psychological counselor, so by all means, get the psychological background you need. Look at codependency, which is essentially using people like a drug. Sorry, but let's look at what codependency really is. Uh, it, it's, it's not healthy, and it's really not love. <laughs> Underneath it, there's a soul love that's available there. So what can you do as a spiritually evolving being. Well, balance the brain seems to be I can be and do at once. I can be in the present moment and I can be loving to this person without an agenda of anything other than they are in pain. I am not here to rescue them. Ultimately, I can't heal them. And you know, if the person's, if they're like closed for business and they don't want to talk healing, they don't want to like, don't give them any spiritual guidance. Don't answer questions that haven't been asked. <laughs> I got that from Abraham Hicks decades ago. I, I still find it to be true. You can tell when somebody's open for business or not. And by all means, when somebody wants help, they'll ask. In the meantime, you can be in their presence in a way where you can be very peaceful, very loving in your thoughts and your blessings and your intentions. May you be blessed. Um, May everyone in this room, in this family, in this gathering be blessed with peace, love, and joy, and may it begin with me. I don't mind leading the way in my own experience that regardless of what's going on with anybody else, doesn't mean that I can't love the journey that I'm on. And it's the holidays, right? So that you can be a little sparkly, a little fun. I know, not usually the Capricorn thing, but it is your season. And by the way, happy birthday. Uh, you know, you're, we are in Capricorn season right now. So why shouldn't you have your Festivus? unlike the rest of us. <laughs> Again, Seinfeldian uh, mythology. Uh, so really, really lovely. Yep, yeah, friendship, some sort of oppression, something going on there, but the chariot really does indicate for the divine masculine, the gods, that there is a way to, to uh, bring this together, to come into uh, alignment, to come into not just synchronicity, but that thing of um, cohesion of the head and heart, to, to speak your conduct, being in alignment with that congruency. Thank you, that's the word. But to know that this is for you too. This is a pattern in your relationships. You're learning how to do this differently and a huge help there balancing the brain knowing the mantra i can be and do all at once lovely reading my capricorns thank you so much for watching happy holidays please do like and subscribe but for now um may you be blessed with the very best of the season my darlings my sweethearts hail farewell and blessed be